let's talk about Juneteenth. This day marks a major turning point in American history, the end of slavery in the United States. June 19th is our Independence Day, the moment when all our ancestors were finally granted their freedom after being enslaved for more than 250 years in America. On this day, we honor all that Black Americans have accomplished and acknowledge how the fight for racial equality is still far from won. And most importantly, we celebrate Black joy. But Juneteenth wasn't always recognized as a national holiday like it is today, and it took a long time for us to get here. So when was it first recognized? How did it become a national holiday? And what does the word Juneteenth mean anyway? I'm Maya Eaglin. And I'm Tremaine Lee. We're gonna break it all down and more in this episode of Understanding Juneteenth. Many Americans had never even heard of Juneteenth until recently, but to really understand the roots of the celebration, we have to go way back to 1863, when Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation, effectively ending slavery. But not all enslaved people knew this happened. It took more than two years for the news to reach Texas. On June 19th, 1865, Major General Gordon Granger arrived in Galveston, Texas with Union soldiers, many of whom were black, where he told the enslaved people there that the Civil War had ended and they were now free. Months later, the 13th Amendment was ratified, officially abolishing slavery in all of the U.S. It's not surprising Juneteenth was so unheard of around the country because it actually started as a regional holiday. In the late 1860s, Black Americans celebrated it like it was the 4th of July. They held prayer services, readings of the Emancipation Proclamation, told personal stories about their experiences, and so much more. These kinds of celebrations dwindled over time, but picked back up again in the late 1960s, coinciding with the Civil Rights Movement. And in 1980, Juneteenth became an official state holiday in Texas. Florida, Oklahoma, and Minnesota were the first, besides Texas, to commemorate the date in the 1990s. As the decades went on, people fought to make it a federal holiday. Opal Lee, known as the grandmother of Juneteenth, was one of those people. In 2016, she insisted on walking from her home in Texas to Washington, D.C. in a symbolic gesture for the cause. Others joined in collecting signatures for a petition from folks in cities all across the country. This became an annual march until finally, in 2021, President Biden officially signed it into law as a federal holiday. Let's talk about the actual name of the holiday. You get the word Juneteenth by simply combining the month of June and the 19th into one. But the holiday also has a few other names like Emancipation Day, Black Independence Day, and Juneteenth Independence Day. Today, Juneteenth celebrations take many forms, from backyard family barbecues to festivals, concerts and parades, plus pop-up shops supporting Black-owned businesses. Honoring Juneteenth in whatever form you choose is personal. This history impacts all of us and is a great reminder that we'll never forget the impact of slavery, its consequences, or the work that still needs to be done toward racial equality and equity. And this Juneteenth is just a reminder for me that we walk in mighty big footsteps and stand on broad shoulders. And so I know my people have fought hard to get to this point and I'll be celebrating them. I know my family will be sharing a plate of barbecue and talking about our legacy in Louisiana and North Carolina. And if you wanna honor the holiday, remember to celebrate black life, black joy, and uplift black voices.